All the world loves a lover, says Ralph Waldo Emerson in his essay on love. Tony Orlando also sings, All the world loves a lover. What we are going to listen to today is a love story. A love story called The Birthmark by Nathaniel Hawthorne. The Birthmark is a love story of Ilma and Georgiana. Ilma was a scientist, a scientist with a passion. He was totally involved in his science experiments, in his laboratory. He was passionate and obsessed with the ideas of science where he tried to unravel and bring out the secrets and the different combinations that would bring about discoveries. Now Nathaniel Hawthorne lived in a time where uh, he belonged to Salem, Massachusetts and he lived in a time where the uh, history brought in the, an account of the Salem, Massachusetts witch trials. Nathaniel Hawthorne's grandfather, John Hathorne, this was how his name was spelt, John Hathorne, was the judge in the Salem, in the trials of the Salem witches, where around um, 200 witches were tried, you know, pe uh, people supposed to be witches who were um, accused of practicing witchery and witchcraft and sorcery were uh, executed. 20 of them were, uh, 200 were caught, tried and 20 of them were executed. This was an uh, later proved uh, something that had been made up. It had been a lie. It had been a misrepresentation. And John Hathorne, the judge who had executed these 20 witches, uh, came down in history as someone who had committed a crime that was beyond uh, forgiveness. Nathaniel Hawthorne was so, must have been um, so affected, so much affected by the history into which he was born that he very um, thoughtfully uh, changed his name. He brought in the W where it was not there for his grandfather and that is how he becomes Nathaniel Hawthorne. And Nathaniel Hawthorne, as I told you, maybe because he was brought up in the lineage of the witch trials, uh, in the lineage that Salem, Massachusetts bore, the mark that it bore of the witch trials, that his novels, his writings uh, began to be or began to uh, echo uh, certain certain sights, certain sounds, certain impulses and the dark side of man. And though he belonged to the romantic period, he was called a dark romantic. He belonged to the romantic period which was parallel to the romantic period in England, but he became, uh, he, his kind of romanticism, you know what the romantic is. Uh, is where there is a lot of imagination, where there is a lot of uh, um, beauty, where there is uh, nature represented, where a lot of uh, flowers and uh, birds and all the things of nature, all that is beautiful gets represented. But here we find him diverging, moving away from the beauty of romanticism. He kept up the imagination side of it, but 
brought in the dark side of imagination. He brought in his world was a world of ghosts. His world was a world of the dark, the mysterious, what was um, hidden in man's nature, what was behind inside man, inside his mind, inside his spirit. That was what Nathaniel Hawthorne depicted as uh, the characters in his novels and his, uh, uh, his plays, his uh, short stories. Now, he was also uh, a, a master of the Gothic. Now, Gothic is um, a kind of a, a word which has many implications. It suggests, it's a very suggestive word. It suggests Gothic, it, it can extend to Gothic architecture, it can extend to people, it can extend to what is shown uh, around by way which is different from uh, the normal, different from you, you will find huge buildings with carvings, dark interiors, you will find graveyards, you will find uh, ghosts, you will find spirits, you will find witches, you will have a lot of things that are born only out of the imagination. And this is the world of the Gothic that Nathaniel, Nathaniel Hawthorne um, picturizes in his short stories. And that is why he is different from the romantic breed of, uh, peop of people to which of poets or writers to which he belongs. So we have our story beginning. We come back to Georgiana and Alma. As I told you, Almer was a scientist. He was very, very obsessed with what he was doing. He, his world was a world of test tubes and uh, titration uh, flasks and uh, salts and chemicals and potions, etc. And it was a time when just after Nathaniel Hawthorne brings in a time just after the, the discovery of electricity. So that is mentioned here to show how Alma was also um, involved in uh, discoveries, in discoveries, scientific discoveries that were world renowned. He used to write, he used to record his experiments. So he was both a, a scientist in practice, uh, in praxis and a scientist uh, by way of writing and uh, uh, giving it of, of, as reading material for the others to read and come up. So um, Eilmer was famous in, his, in the world of science, but at the point at which the story begins, we find Eilmer uh, having partially retired from his lab, story, uh, the storyteller Nathaniel Hawthorne says how he has washed the stains of acid from his fingers and he comes into the other side leaving or the other side of the lab leaving his assistant Amina Dab. So let me write down the characters for you. Um, we have Alma. We have just three characters in this novel. Alma, Georgiana, and Aminadab. We have Alma and Georgiana paired together, and we have Aminadab the assistant, the lab assistant to whom Alma has entrusted the lab for the time being. Alma is, meets Georgiana. He meets Georgiana and the, falls in love with her and she of course with him. They marry and here you see a passion that was born in Alma retains itself on the same level. Alma, who was passionate about science, shifts his passion onto Georgiana.
and so you have the same passion the same passion with which he pursued science is equivalent to the same passion with which he pursues Georgiana. Of course, they marry, so the question of pursuit doesn't arise. They marry and you find Georgiana the epitome of beauty. She is so beautiful that the novel describes her as the most beautiful thing or woman on earth. Alma enjoys her beauty. He sits for hours gazing at her beauty. But there is something that takes away from the, the, the admiration. There is something that disturbs him in his appreciation of Georgiana's beauty. Georgiana comes with a mark on her left cheek, a mark that was that came with her as she was born, when she was born. It is a mark that has been there with her throughout her life until she marries Alma. So she comes with a mark on her left cheek and the mark, which is the birthmark, the name of the story, is a mark that is in the shape of a hand. Now, it is a very tiny microscopic, uh, in the story, it's mentioned as a pygmy sized. A pygmy is a very, very small fairy, a tiny microscopic fairy. So, this is a tiny hand which looks like the imprint of a hand on the left cheek of Georgiana. Now, it is described very beautifully. Georgiana is Mm, flawless, flawless meaning with no marks, uh, nothing that will spoil the beauty, the purity of her face. So her face is totally flawless without any kind of marks or blemishes. And on that beautiful, pure, clear face, you have this hand, the tiny hand, which is uh, two shades darker than her. If Georgiana uh, it has a pinkish color, uh, the mark is crimson. The color is a dark pink, something nearing red. So it is a darker red colored mark that is there on her cheek. This mark um, the story says, uh, the storyteller tells us how there have been so many men who have been following Georgiana for her beauty, who have uh, proposed to Georgiana for they wanted to become uh, her husband. But all of them followed her and loved her for the birthmark. They wanted her with the birthmark. But for Alma, the man of perfection who has uh, been obsessed with science and obsessed with the idea of producing the highest of and the finest of experiments, the most beautiful experiments, for Alma, this hand is something that subtracts from Georgiana's wholesome beauty. For him, this mark uh, takes away, destroys, um, subtracts, as I said, uh, an element from the beauty of Georgiana. And it is irritating to him. He does not want this mark on her. And there are times when uh, we, we uh, read how uh, there are times when he sits and gazes at uh, Georgiana all the time imagining the mark to be gone. One day, um, Georgiana uh, speaks, uh, tells Alma, uh, my dearest husband, you had a dream yesterday. And in that dream, I heard you talking. So I know what your dream is about. Alma does not remember. He says, uh, did I dream? I don't remember. And Georgiana said, yes, my dearest, you dreamt. I heard you saying that I will take away the birthmark from her 
and he also says that this cannot be done after a while i heard you sh shouting that this cannot be done for it has reached her heart and this is what made me scared and you shuddered every time you look at me you shudder shudder is shiver you shiver and i cannot stand that he says i think we can remove this birthmark and georgiana is angry she says if you want did not want me with the birthmark why didn't you leave me at my mother's side you shouldn't have brought me you shouldn't have married me why couldn't you have left me there ailma has nothing to answer but he he keeps uh, this thing has become an obsession with him if science was an obsession with him for him earlier the birthmark becomes an obsession for him now so ailma is obsessed with georgiana's birthmark and constantly um, we hear echoes of how ailma had spoken in his dream he had said it is in her heart now we must have it out this is um ailma's dream where he and aminadab now let me introduce aminadab to you aminadab is his um assistant and the first glimpse that we get of aminadab is not now is a little later when georgiana is taken into the lab for her first um experiments for the first set of experiments that ailma wants to do on her as part of removing this birthmark so uh, georgiana uh, at a point of there comes a point of time when georgiana begs ailma please remove this birthmark from me i cannot tolerate it any more i cannot tolerate the look on your face the way you look at me if i cannot be of happiness to you my dearest husband i do not want to live i do not want to live with this birthmark take it away from me and uh, she this is what she says either remove this birthmark or take my wretched life and ailma says um georgiana with you i am experimenting and with you i am moving deeper into the areas or the powers of science now what we have here is the first series of experiments beginning with ailma and aminadab working together and georgiana uh being the subject of their experiments uh, we see georgiana uh, being led into the part of the lab now there is something in the way nathaniel hawthorn has brought in uh, the, the pictured the whole story the setting of the story the setting of the story is uh, there are two parts uh, to the place where um ailma and georgiana live one part is the core lab the experimental lab which georgiana hasn't seen yet the other part is the boudoir boudoir or the bed chamber or the chambers where georgiana can rest um when ailma can also rest in uh, times when he is not in the lab so the boudoir which is uh, one side of the french for bed chamber now one side of the uh, house where the other side of the house is the lab which once um georgiana uh, is happens to see unknown by ailma now before that we find uh, uh we need to describe aminadab aminadab is in total contrast to ailma aminadab is physical with a strong body short with long hair um a face which does not see much a face that 
uh, that does not look at people straight, a face that um, is very different from the kind of thin, delicate uh, face that Ailma has. A Aminadab is rough. He is uh, rough and strong and well built with long shaggy hair, hair that is not combed. So he is a total contrast to Ailma who is very delicate, very thoughtful. He's fine. He's fine the way he works in the lab, the way he conducts his experiments, there is a fineness and a thoughtfulness about him. Now, the, the writer calls Ailma a man of the spirit, while Aminadab is called a man of the physical nature. He is a man of the earth, while Ailma is a man of the spirit. So this is a total contrast that is brought about. Another contrast that is brought about is between the lab, as I told you, the core lab and the bodhua. So we have the contrast between Ailma and um, Aminadab and the contrast between the lab and the bodhua. The bodhua or the bedchamber is beautiful. It has beautiful shimmering curtains, there are, there are lots of pictures, there, are, uh, there, are, there is a beautiful bed, very comfortable with cushions and beautiful bedspreads and it is a place where you can dream, it is a place where you can imagine, it is a place where you can have fun, you can enjoy your life, it is a luxurious place while the core lab that you have next on the other side of the house which is hidden is a lab where there is hard equipment, hardcore equipment and one equipment that stands out in the lab is the furnace. The furnace is there, you have uh, one day Georgiana while these experiments regarding her mark are going on, she happens to look into, peep into uh, the lab and there she has a shock when she meets, when she sees Aminadab. Also you find her um, being shocked at the, the, the lab per se, where you have all this, um, the beakers and the uh, test tubes and the furnace and fire and uh, there is, there is, that is the term that is described. There is fire in the lab while there is beauty and peace and sleep in the bodhua and luxury. So this is another contrast and this is the same contrast between um, Ailma, uh, the scientist in the lab and Ailma, the, uh, the man who is in love with Georgiana outside the lab. So uh, in a way, uh, there is, they, these are the two contrasts that are presented. Now um, what happens is the series of experiments begun, begin. Uh, what happens is uh, to show um, uh, Georgiana is troubled, it is very natural on her part, she is submitting to all this just to please her husband, just to prove her intense love for her husband. And so uh, Ailma finds it his duty to uh, make her, to keep her happy and to keep her entertained. So what does he do? He tries to show her a few experiments and this is the point where science is said to, is shown as going beyond the world of experiments, going beyond the world of, um, of uh, discoveries into the other world, the world of the supernatural, the world of magic, the world of miracles. And the, the moment we hear the word miracle, magic, we know that it does not belong to the earth. It goes beyond the world of science, it goes beyond reality. And here we find Ailma trying to entertain 
Georgiana with a few um, magical, um, magical demonstrations of his powers. He takes a plant. In the, um, as she happens to come to uh, the lab, he shows her a plant, uh, a, a plant that is uh, that rises out of the earth. Uh, he just shows her a, a, a vessel containing earth, and out of the earth there rises this plant. And he tells her, uh, "This plant is not going to stay long. Uh, it uh, and you you just touch it and see." Georgiana touches it and immediately the plant withers off. It just dies in her hands. And this again is symbolic because it shows that um, what is from nature does not or cannot exist in this lab. Now, um, Another experiment that or another experiment, a result of the experiment that um, Aylmer shows Georgiana is he brings her a goblet. It is a kind of a glass bowl, a kind of a bowl that is shaped almost like this. The drawing is not good, but it is shaped like this. So it could be, could have a base, a goblet would be something like this, much better than this though. So. Uh, there is this goblet which he fills with a yellow liquid and he says uh, this even a drop of this can uh, wipe away the marks on um, anyone's face. He calls them the freckles or the marks on anyone's face and he says Georgiana is happy. She asks you just need to pour a few drops onto my cheek and my cheek will be clear isn't it? Alma says, no, your mm, case requires a remedy that goes much deeper. Those are the first warning bells that we hear. Of course, the warning bells began long before when we hear uh, or uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne uh, writing a comment on the dream that Alma had had. Remember the dream where he speaks about um, how uh, uh, we must have it out, it is in her heart. And there uh, Hawthorne mentions how when science goes beyond uh, a certain point, it, uh, sleep cannot control certain uh, secrets, which uh, secrets of the night. Now everyone is supposed to dream or everyone dreams, but the dreams remain with us. Uh, we speak about them if we want to, if we remember them. They are our personal possession. But here, the dream that Aylmer dreams comes out of him and goes to Georgiana even before he can remember it. He forgets his dream. It is Georgiana who reminds him about his dream. And that, those are the first um, signs of danger, first signs of tragedy that we have um, in the story. Then of course it goes to the golden liquid where he says your case requires a remedy that is much deeper. Now the that the experiments goes on. There is a long period of time when um, Georgiana is asked to rest in the boudoir uh, while, uh, while Alma uh, works in the lab with Aminadab. There is one instance when Aminadab in uh, the, the trials are continuing. Georgiana is given potions and uh, uh, liquids which uh, do not seem to work at first. When Aminadab sees her, the, the comment which he says is, if she were my wife, I would never part with that birthmark. Now that is the biggest contrast that Hawthorne brings about between Aminadab, the man of the earth, and Ailma, the man of the spirit. It is in his search for perfection, in his search to beat science, in his search to defeat uh, nature that Ailma's 
tragedy begins. And the, the dark atmosphere that Nathaniel Hawthorne is creating darkens. Uh, we enter into that dark world with fear. We do not know what is going to happen. We are given uh, instances of approaching disaster, of approaching doom. And we wait silently, just as Georgiana waits in the boudoir. She is waiting there. She is, in order to pass the time, she looks at the library that uh, Aylmer has. He has a vast library. Uh, he's got books from all over the world on science and different experiments. In fact, there are books on magic, on the supernatural, on the spirits, etc. Now she reads, uh, mostly she reads, there are mention, there is a mention of the different, uh, a few authors that she reads, including uh, the author Eilmer. And that is what is more important because Eilmer's books show her the Eilmer, the man of science, the man, the famous scientist that her husband is. And reading all those experiments and the wonders that Eilmer has contributed to the scientific world, um, Georgiana falls ever deeply in love with him. She starts admiring him, she starts adoring him, she becomes so, uh, she starts worshipping him. And at this moment, we see how Georgiana more than ever wants to do away with this birthmark so that she can please her husband and make him happy and make him happy and satisfied with her because she has begun to feel guilty. That is the effect that it has on her. She's begun to keep, feel guilty about having or possessing this um, birthmark, this cursed birthmark on her face. And so um, what we see is again uh, in the books, uh, she meets an Ailma who she, whom she concludes is a failure. He was renowned by the world, but what we see in each experiment that Georgiana reads about, she finds Ailma uh, striving for perfection, striving for perfection, yet not being satisfied with what he has discovered. So you find him going on and on, never stopping. He uh, tries to um, discover more and more, create more and more, yet he never stops because he's not satisfied with what he has found out. And there Georgiana brands him a failure. And that must be um, Eilmer's defeat in life too. So we find um, um, an Eilmer who is a failure being interpreted by Georgiana. He comes to give her test doses in between and on one such trip she, she follows him uh, without his knowledge to the lab because she was so bored. She follows him to the lab and there it is that she sees the lab for the first time. She sees a different Ailma there. He is pale, he is deathly pale and he is performing his experiments along with Aminadab. Aminadab doesn't see anything, doesn't register anything, he knows only to obey. He cannot um, uh, equate, he doesn't know what uh, um, Ailma is doing. He only can uh, obey Ailma. And here we find him, um, we find him obeying a deathly pale Ailma who is, who is shocking to Georgiana. She cannot uh, recognize this as her husband, the same person. And um, she, uh, he, he looks back and he's shocked, he's not happy at Georgiana having discovered him in the lab, which he had uh, hidden, consciously hidden from her. From her. So he tells her, uh, why did you come here? And she asks him, will I ever be rid of this birthmark? And uh, he, she asks him, she is afraid. She asks him, will I die? Now, um, Eilmer cannot answer directly. He himself is not sure of what he is doing and what the outcome will be. So 
he, he asks her to go back and rest because she needs that rest. She asks uh, her, he asks her to go back to the Bodhua and uh, continue um, waiting for him there. She goes back. After a while, he brings her a liquid, uh, a colorless liquid that looks as pure as what is called the waters of immortality. He brings her this liquid uh, and asks her to drink. In fact, he shows her proof that this liquid will probably or most surely clear her, um, her spot, her mark. He, he tries, he does a demo experiment on um, yellow geranium flower. Geranium is a, is a flower of, that is used as decoration. He, uh, you, uh, he takes a yellow geranium and uh, with spots on it and he pours this liquid over the uh, petals of the flower. As they watch, the, pet, the spots on the petals fade off and the flower emerges beautiful. Now this is, this raises uh, the confidence of both Ailma and Georgiana. Georgiana submits to the experiment and he, she's, uh, she, she's happy with uh, presenting herself to Ailma for uh, her final, you know, the trial that he does. The, um, he makes her drink this, ex, uh, the liquid, asks her to lie down. You find a, a, a Georgiana at peace lying down on a bed. She, is, uh, she falls into a, a, a slumber, it is called a slumber, uh, not a deep sleep, but a kind of light sleep. At the end of which she wakes up, she wakes up to say, I'm better, I feel okay. And as she lies down, you find, and as she wakes up, as she lies down uh, and wakes up from her sleep, we see the mark slowly being erased. The, the, the birthmark, the cursed birthmark that was there on her cheek is very gradually erased. And you find her Georgiana, the epitome of perfection. You find her the perfect being that um, Ailma had dreamt of or that Ailma had wanted her to be. But she says, I'm dying. You have snatched away what the, the best that the earth could offer. And she says, I'm leaving you my husband for I am dying. Those are the words that spell out clear tragedy for Ailma. The man who, stri uh, who was striving after perfection finds himself bereft, finds himself lonely, finds himself without anyone to love, finds himself alone in this world which is perfect to him on sight, but not perfect to him in spirit. And this is how the birthmark ends, the separation of Georgiana and Ailma. So the love story that begins with love ends uh, in a misery, in a misery. And that is probably why Nathaniel Hawthorne uh, has been called a dark romantic. In fact, all the stories, his, his famous uh, book, The Scarlet Letter, is another, uh, is another book that speaks about the psychology and the life of the spirit. So uh, this is uh, the birthmark for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed the story uh, as much, listening to the story as much as I did telling it.